Amen. Amen. I hope you've seen how beautiful our community garden looks this summer. It's going crazy out there. The garden team has been doing an amazing job, working very hard. Produce like we're already harvesting doesn't happen without a lot of preparation, attention, and care. We learned some things last year, endured a drought, tested and then amended the soil, got some advice from a professor at the Mount, and tried some new techniques this summer. That's how gardening works. Jenny and Adam tease me because every year I refer to my garden as an experiment, even after 30 years. But it is. We try new things. We focus on good preparation. We watch carefully for needed interventions throughout the growing season. And hopefully, we reap a good harvest. The garden produces abundantly if all goes well. Isn't that kind of how the Christian life is? Isn't that kind of how our relationship with God is? It requires attention, care, preparation, cultivation. If we just ignore it, then it won't bear the fruits of faith and hope and love. But if we act like gardeners, tending the growth of our connection to God in Christ, good things will happen. Of course, it's a two-way relationship, and Scripture is filled with images of God preparing us like a garden. Isaiah proclaims the beautiful message we heard this morning. As the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return until they have watered the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. Just as God provides the earth what it needs to give us our daily bread, so does God's word provide for us spiritually, giving us the strength and the resources we need. The writer of Psalm 65 likewise gives thanks for God's gifts. You visit the earth and water it abundantly. Yes, you crown the year with your goodness and your paths overflow. With plenty. God is taking care of us like a gardener cares for the garden, watching over us, giving us what we need, preparing us to produce the fruits of the kingdom. Paul says to the Romans, if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through his spirit that dwells in you. If the Spirit dwells in you. The indwelling of the Spirit is the fruit of preparation, care, cultivation, our two-way relationship with the God who sustains and empowers us, especially when we cultivate our relationship with God through prayer, through the sacraments, through scripture, through gratitude, through hope, through remaining rooted and grounded in the good soil. Now, having said all of that about careful preparation and control, what about this parable? This is not the image of the organized gardener starting early in the season to make sure the soil is ready. All of the amendments are done and the precious seeds will have everything they need to thrive. It's a parable about a seemingly reckless sower who tosses the valuable seeds all over the place. It would be like if we, after building our raised beds, filling them with organic soil and compost, getting everything prepared, then started scattering seeds in the middle of the parking lot, on the sidewalk, in the skate park across the street. It makes no sense. Why would a sower do that? Why would God go to all the trouble of preparing us just to throw three quarters of the valuable seeds around carelessly and wastefully on rocky ground, on the path, among the thorns? 
The parable reminds us that the seeds of love and justice are sown everywhere, even in the parts of us that might resist and even reject it, like the rocky ground that can't provide any depth or the thorns of stubbornness and selfishness that choke out the word. God is preparing us, but God is more faithful than we are. God is more generous than we can imagine and more constant. The sower sows with abundance, not with scarcity, constantly seeking the response that will lead to the harvest God desires. God doesn't just want a response from the careful, safe parts of us, the parts that sit and read the Bible or come to church every Sunday. God wants to get in there where we struggle, where we have regrets, where we're lured away or confused by the world. The parable tells us that God always believes there's a chance. God always has more faith in us than we have in him. It's sort of an amazing image, really, this sower throwing the seeds around. It's surprising, it's shocking even. But how many times has it been proven? How many times has something happened in your life that you didn't expect? How many times has a little seedling of hope and love and healing popped up where you least expected it? Where you were sure it couldn't possibly happen? God is at work. And if this parable has been proven to you in your life, then you know that God is calling you to sow the seeds of compassion and righteousness everywhere, even when we can't see the potential that might be there. God is calling us to sow generously, even wildly, spreading the good news abundantly, not so much by our words as by our actions. I believe that when we do that, God works through us. God is calling us, especially now, to put our resources and our energies out there into the world, taking some risks, experimenting, innovating, scattering the seeds broadly, and working for that abundant harvest Jesus predicts. It's a balance, caring for the garden, growing the garden, but always reaching beyond, too. That's what being Christian is about. That's what being the church is about. Just talk to anyone from our congregation who has done laundry love. Try going along sometime with them and seeing what happens when they scatter the seeds, when they pay for a load of laundry. Little miracles. Little miracles every time. You can't produce anything if you don't plant something. Let us pray that God will continue to work through us, planting the seeds, growing the garden, producing the fruit of God's reign on earth. Amen. Amen.